27 Tajriya section 1 by night on my bed Rabbi Lazer explains that the title verse means that the children of Israel lay in the dust in exile and beseeched God to take them out of it Rabbi Yitzhak says that they asked God to join them so that he would gladden them and bless them in perfect joy 1 and Hashem spoke to Moses saying speak to the children of Israel saying if a woman have conceived seed and born a man child Bayakra 122 Rabbi Lazer opened with by night on my bed I sought him whom my soul loves Sure Hashirim 31 he asks it says on my bed while it should have said in my bed why on my bed and he answers the congregation of Israel spoke before the Holy One blessed be he and beseeched him concerning the exile because she is sitting among the other nations with her children and lying in the dust and since she is lying in another defiled land she said on my bed I beseech since I am lying in exile and exile is called nights therefore I sought him whom my soul loves to take me out of it too I sought him but found him not of it because it is not his custom to join me save in his palace and not in exile I sought him but I could not find him Sure Hashirim 56 since I dwelt among other nations and only his children hear his voice as written did ever people hear the voice of Elohim Devarim 433 three Rabbi Yitzhak said by night on my bed said the congregation of Israel the Sheshanah on my bed I complained before him. Namely I asked him to join me to gladden me from the left column and bless me from the right column in perfect joy from the central column for we have learned that from the union of the kings Eir and with the congregation of Israel many righteous people receive the inheritance of a holy portion namely supernal mokin and many blessings thus abide in the world section 2 who can find a woman of worth a woman of worth and a virtuous woman is said to be the congregation of Israel her price is far above rubies means those lofty holy rubies that are the mysteries and inner meaning of the Torah God may safely trust in the congregation of Israel which is why he put her in charge over the world she bestows goodness on the world and not evil the tree of life zero and sends her life that is mokin from Bina and shines upon her for Rabbi Abba was walking to the cave of Lot in the village of Kenya with Rabbi Yossi and Rabbi Shi Rabbi Yossi said it is written a virtuous woman is a crown to her husband Mishlei 124 the virtuous woman is the congregation of Israel the Shechina while she that acts shamefully as a rottenness in his bones if it refers to the heathen nations whom the holy one blessed be he cannot tolerate in the world as written therefore I abhorred Hebekuts them Vayikra 2023 like the thorns headcots and thistles that give pain to man so he cannot bear them Rabbi Abba said it is surely so the virtuous woman is the congregation of Israel who is mistress over many armies and hosts of angels that abide in the world namely all the dwellers in Bria Yitzra and Asia that expand from her a virtuous woman means both a mistress and master a crown to her husband I similar to the words a crown of glory Latiferet Yeshua 623 and it is all the same since Tiferet is the husband of the Shechina while they were walking Rabbi Abba said let us each say something about the congregation of Israel 5. Rabbi Abba opened with who can find a woman of worth Mishlei 3110 it is the congregation of Israel who is a woman of worth like we said who can find resembles that which shall befall you in the last days Bereshi 491 which means that which shall arrive and happen to you here too who can find means who will deserve to arrive at IT and be in her to perfection and be with her always six for her price or selling is far above rubies Mishlei 3110 he asks it says her price wallet should have been her buying which means it is more difficult to buy her than rubies why did it say her selling and he answers since she sells all those who do not completely cleave to her or are whole towards her and turns them over to the other nations as you say and when they forgot Hashem their Elohim he sold them into the hand of Sisera Ishmael 129 and they are all far from those lofty holy rubies which are the mysteries and inner meaning of the Torah in which you shall have no part. This is the meaning of for her price is far above rubies. 7 Rabbi she opened with the following verse The heart of her husband safely trusts in her and he shall have no lack of gain. Mishlei 3111 The heart of her husband safely trusts in her refers to the Holy One blessed be his E.I.R. and who for this reason put her in charge over the world to be guided by her all his armory he put in her hand and all the soldiers therefore he shall have no lack of gain. 8 Rabbi Yossi explained The following verse she will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. Abid 12 she will do him good means she bestows goodness upon the world and bestows goodness upon the king's palace and the household people and not evil had to be mentioned due to the words and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Bereshi 29 Malchut is called the tree of knowledge of good and evil because if one has merit it is good but if one does not have merit it is evil it therefore says and not evil. When is it good and not evil when the days of heaven the Sfirat of Zeir and shine upon her and unite with her properly for the days of heaven are the days of her life because the tree of life Zeir and sends her life which is Mokin from Bina and shines upon her at that time she will do him good and not evil Rabbi Abba said this as well and all these verses refer to the congregation of Israel section 3 if a woman conceives first she bears a male child Rabbi. You see resolve some confusion over if a woman have conceived seed by saying that God distinguishes between a male and a female seed and once he has seen it he decides whether it will be male or female 9 if a woman have conceived seed Vayikra 122 we learned that if a woman conceives first she bears a male child Rabbi Acha said that we learned that the Holy One blessed be he determines whether that drop will be male or female yet you say that if a woman conceives first she gives birth to a Male child in that case there is no need for the decision of the Holy One blessed be he Rabbi Yossi said surely the Holy One blessed be he distinguishes between a male drop and a female drop once he observed it he decided whether it would be male or female 10 Rabbi Yossi said and born a man child if it does she give birth once she conceives that the verse says if a woman have conceived seed and born a man child but it depends upon pregnancy and the verse should have read if a woman have been pregnant and born a man child why then have conceived seed and born Rabbi Yossi said from the day they have conceived women talk of nothing except whether their baby will be male hence scripture says if a woman have conceived seed and born a man child section 4 the earth is full of your creatures Rabbi Shizkiah tells us that God does his deeds with wisdom wisely sowing all the seeds so that each matures in its own time the earth is full means that the Earth has been filled by everything that flows from by 11 if a woman have conceived seed Vayikra 122 Rabbi Shizkiah opened with the verse Hashem how manifold are your works Tehillim 10424 how many are the deeds of the holy king in the world this is likened to a man who took different kinds of seeds together and planted them at the same time afterwards each kind sprouts on its own the holy one blessed be he similarly does his deeds with wisdom wisely taking everything together and planting them afterwards each comes out in its own time this is the meaning of in wisdom have you made them all of it 12 Rabbi Abba said Hashem how manifold are your works how many are the deeds of the holy deed all everything existent throughout the world is hidden with wisdom hence it says in wisdom have you made them all they are all incorporated in wisdom and emerge only by means of specific paths the 32 paths of wisdom to from there from by everything is made and Accomplished hence by understanding it is established Mishlei 243 it therefore says in wisdom have you made them all in Bina through Bina 13 the earth is full Tehillim 10424 the earth is the congregation of Israel which is Malchut which is filled of all things from there from Bina as written all the rivers run into the sea Kehillah 17 your creatures were brought forth by Malchut afterwards as written these are the generations of the heaven and of the earth when they were created Hebbi Abraham Bereshit 24 which can be construed as Behabaram he created them with Hey it is Malchut the last Hey of Yud Hey Bahay for that reason the earth is full of your creatures section 5 surely a man walks in an image we learn that when a man and his wife are about to make God gives the spirit of the child who will be conceived to a minister and tells him where it should go God commands the spirit to be righteous and then the spirit Descends with an image as long as he has that image with him he exists in the world but when it leaves him he dies we read about the witchcraft described in the book of the sorcerers of Esmodus where they knew how to give over their images to the other side we are told that one must never throw objects in his house because they are then of the other side when that man who gave over his image to the other side dies the evil spirit that was attached to his supernal image takes it away from him so that it will never return before a soul
The spirit then descends with an image the same image that assumes the supernal shape called the image of Elohim one is created with that image and walks about with it in this world this is the meaning of surely every man walks in a vain show or image Tehillim 397 as long as that image is with him man exists in this world but if the image is gone from him he dies these are two images have Tehillim that join together King Solomon warned people saying before the day cools and the shadows have Shalom flee away Shur Hashirim 217 two of them 16 in the book of the sorcerers of Esmodus I found that those who wish to perform witchcraft from the left side and be attached to them must stand by candlelight or wherever his images are seen that is by the light of the moon and say the word suitable for these enchantments and address those aspects of impurity using their names of impurity one then hands over his images to those names of impurity he summoned and says he willingly sets them at their disposal and at their command man then leaves the domain of his master and his master's deposit namely the soul given to him as a deposit by his master he gives to the aspects of impurity 17 by these words of witchcraft he uttered and by summoning his images two spirits appear and settle in those images to assume human form they tell him at specific times thanks to his own hurt and thanks to his own good these two spirits that were not incorporated in the body since he did not have time to make them bodies before he sanctified Shabbat are now incorporated in these images that man gave them they settle in them and tell that man thanks to his own damage such a one left his master's domain and gave his deposit namely his soul to the side of defilement 18 come and see one must not throw the objects in his house or any other such thing in his anger and thus deliver them to the other side he must not do so because many litigants and persecutors await to receive that object from that time on no blessings dwell on it because it is of the other side this is more so for whoever willingly summons that supernal good that is his image to another and to the other side since he summons his image he is his 19 when the time draws near for man to depart from this world the evil spirit that used to cleave daily to that supernal image that was given that man and takes that image from him it settles in it and walks away and that image will never return to that man that man then realizes he is rejected in every sense. Twenty come and see when the soul descends to be ushered into this world. It first descends to the Garden of Eden where it beholds the glory of the spirits of the righteous that stand in rows. It then goes to Gehenna where it sees the wicked crying woe woe but none has mercy upon them. It is given testimony about anything the wicked testify how they are punished for every sin and the righteous testify to the good reward they receive for each. Precept that holy image stands by it until it comes into this world. Twenty one when it goes out into the world that image comes to it joins it and grows with it as said. Surely every man walks in an image man stays joined that image and depend on it for once it is gone man departs from the world. This is the meaning of for we are but of yesterday and know nothing because our days upon earth are a shadow. Eo 89 assuredly our days upon earth are a shadow as our days depend on that shadow from. The day a woman conceives until the day she gives birth no men know the deeds of the Holy One blessed be he how great they are how superior this is the meaning of Hashem how manifold are your works Tehillim 10424 section 6 and born a man child although the souls of male and female are supposed to come into this world together ever since the sin of the first man and woman this has not been so they are divided when they emerge from above into this world if the man does not have enough merit he never finds his soulmate and if he marries another his children are impure Rabbi Lazar says that thousands of souls emerge simultaneously into the world but they are not considered nefeshat until they settle in the body and receive their illumination from Malchut this takes 33 days he talks about the blood of purification and the blood of circumcision 22 come and see every spirit in the world incorporates male and female when they emerge into this world they Come out as male and female and then divide according to their custom the spirit of the male is clothed in a male and the spirit of the female in a female afterwards if a man has merit they join he and his mate and mate in a union in every sense in spirit and bodily as written let the earth bring forth living creatures after their kind bear she 124 what is after their kind it is the spirit of the man that comes out with his mate that resembles it 23 he asks what is the earth in it verse let the earth bring forth it resembles the words and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth tail 13915 which is Malchut this has been explained let the earth bring forth as we explained it to refer to the spirit of the first man who emerged and was born to Malchut called earth this is the meaning of the words but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden bear she 33 the fruit of the tree refers to the holy one blessed be he namely Zeirin Called the tree of life whose fruit is the spirit of the first man which is in the midst of the garden within the woman as we learned who is Malchut called woman and called garden for the spirit of the first man came out from the union of Zeir and, and Malchut this is the meaning of if a woman have conceived seed and born a man child Bayakra 122 the woman Malchut bears the souls it is also written and born a man child not included of male and female as is the custom of the world that the souls are born male and female for the lower beings by their sins cause Malchut that the souls will not join male with female as they come out from above as couples male and female hence it is written and born a man child since in this world only a male not including a female appears 24 since the first man and his mate he had sinned against the holy one blessed be he male and female are therefore divided when they emerge from above into this world the soul of the male is born on its own and the soul of the female on its own until it will please the Holy One blessed be he if man gains merit to give him his soulmate that is the soul of the female that was incorporated in him above otherwise she is separated from him and given to another and then they beget improper children hence it is written my spirit shall not always strive on account of man bear sheet 63 why does it say my spirit it should have said his spirit of man for there are two spirits emerging in two society should rather be pronounced spirits the verse says they must not be striven after together because they come out separately it is therefore written and born a man child and not man and woman together according to the ways of the world above because of their deeds 25 rabbi laser said that it is not so that and born a man child means he is born from Malchut into this world as a man without a woman for male and female always come joined together and are then divided and come as man Alone and woman alone but and born a man child refers to a male and a female included together from the right side which is considered male but if she bear a female child they 125 means they are included together as female and male from the left side which is considered female then the left side has more power over the right side and the male on the right is subdued and has no power the male that comes from the Mukba Malchut from her left always acts like a female and is therefore considered a female but a male coming from the right side of Malchut has power and the female that emerges with him is subdued since the left side has no power hence it is written of him and born a man child 26,000 and myriads of souls emerge simultaneously into the world from the time she brought them forth they are not considered nefeshat until they receive their illumination from Malchut until they settle in the body this takes 33 days as written 33 days Vayikra 124. Until then the body is incomplete for the nefesh to settle on and be clothed in it then she shall be unclean seven days of it too namely the nefesh for throughout those seven days no spirits enter her malchut to be connected with her and all those seven days the spirit roams the body to find its place to settle in then it is written it shall be seven days under its dam vayikra 2227 which is malchut and he is underneath her and cannot connect with her 27 on the eighth day the spirit and the body reappear before the queen and connect with her and with the male zeir and in body and soul and she shall continue in the blood of her purifying for 33 days in order for the spirit to settle in the body he asks what is the purpose of the three days and answers these are the three days after circumcision when the child suffers its pain and the spirit does not dwell in the body as in other days hence and she shall continue in the blood of her purifying for 33 days 28 he asks at First scripture says in the blood of her purifying Vayikra 125 and later the days of her purifying Ibit 6 and answers the blood of her purifying refers to the bloods of circumcision blood and more blood coming from the child the Holy One blessed be he keeps those bloods all these days hence it says and she shall continue in the blood of her purifying Hat Tahara the word Tahara unspecified is written without mapic which would render it her purifying so it is not pronounced when. Read this indicates that the last hay of Yud Hay which is Malchut is not mentioned so you shall not say it refers to the purifying of the matron Malchut the mother of the soul but to purifying in general since unspecified blood of her purifying refers to pure bloods this refers to the soul born to her every rising and connection set of Malchut refers to Malchut
Touch no hallowed thing which means for the purpose of taking care of souls that means she does not touch holiness to receive food from holiness which is Z-E-I-R and for those spirits section 7 but if she bear a female child Rabbi Lazer says that a female child comes from the left side that has more power than the right in order to let the spirit be clothed in the body Malchut separates from Zir and 30 but if she bear a female child Bayakra 125 namely Zai. Interpreted since the left side has more power and the right is subdued before it hence it is all double the Malchut is separated from the male Z-E-I-R and to let the spirit attached to be clothed in the body since the left does not settle in the body as well as the right since it divides more in the strength of Burat section 8 circumcision and the foreskin Rabbi Lazer talks about the secret meaning of the circumcision on the eighth day the sign of the holy. Covenant is that the foreskin is said to be the impure serpent that must be banished from Israel and after it is removed it is placed in dust since God made the serpent live in the dust everyone must offer a son as a peace offering and the reason for the circumcision on the eighth day is that at least one Shabbat must have passed R.A.I. Mahim the faithful shepherd 31 and on the eighth day the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised Vayikra 123 the commandment I is to circumcise on it. Eighth day the circumcision of the holy covenant it is a supernal secret as written the secret of Hashem is with them that fear him and he will reveal to them his covenant Tehillim 2514 to whom does he reveal the secret which is the covenant to the fearful who fear sin for it is not suitable to reveal the secret of the holy covenant except for them we have explained and learned the secret of the holy covenant in several places 32 the secret which I is on the eighth day is a universal. Obligation to all the holy people as written and on the eighth day the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised. The eighth day is the sign of the holy covenant namely the sphere Yezid which is the eighth among the Sfirat. If you count the grades from Chakma down Yezid is the eighth grade key to the secret of the endless light is not counted the purpose of the circumcision of the holy covenant I is to remove that foreskin the secret of the impure serpent from before the covenant the holy Yezid. 33 for when the holy nation gathers to remove that foreskin from before the covenant the holy one blessed be he gathers his retinue and reveals himself so as to remove that foreskin above from before the sign of the holy covenant Yezid for all the deeds Yisrael do below rouse a deed above therefore at that time the foreskin which is the impure serpent is banished from before the whole holy nation above a vessel with dust is prepared for that foreskin to keep the foreskin according to the secret. Of the verses and dust shall be the serpent's food. Yeshayah 6525 and, and dust shall you eat all the days of your life. Bereshit 31434. From this we derive that one must not act contemptuously towards that place. The foreskin, even though it is removed from before the member of the covenant, it is placed after being removed from that covenant in the dust. Since after the serpent was removed from man, the holy one blessed be he made him dwell in dust as written. And dust shall you eat all the days of your life. Since the holy one blessed be he made him dwell in dust and formed him. So when he removed him from before man, so in the very same way when we remove the foreskin, we should fix dust for it to dwell in 35. Everyone has to offer a son as an offering to the holy one blessed be he gladly and willingly to enter him under the wings of the Shechinah. This is considered before the holy one blessed be he as a peace offering and is willingly accepted. 36. This offering resembles. An offering from the cattle as both occur on the eighth day is written and from the eighth day and thenceforth it shall be accepted. Vayikra 2227 What makes it acceptable? Itis because he already lived on Shabbat because in eight days there must be one Shabbat. Once he underwent one Shabbat the one shall be acceptable for an offering the animal and the other shall be acceptable the circumcised child. The reason is that he cleaved and came to the Shabbat Malchut the secret of the Holy Covenant. Yes, it this means that yes, it exists on Shabbat in its entirety and hence the child receives illumination from it to institute his Holy Covenant. The cattle shall also be acceptable as an offering because the sacrifice unites yes, it and Malchut and one should therefore be established by the whole yes, it on Shabbat day. Everything follows a supernal secret end of R.A.I. Mahim the section 9 neither is there a rock like our Elohim we learn from Rabbi Shimon that there are Holy beings other than Elohim, angels and the holy children of Israel, and yet they depend for their holiness on Elohim. He does not depend on theirs. We hear two explanations for the title verse, one of which compares the rock to the fetus God formed into which he blew the spirit of life. The other explanation says that the verse merely means that Elohim has power and dominion over everything. 37 If a woman have conceived seed and born a man child, Vayikra 122 Rabbi Yehuda opened with there. Is none holy as Hashem for there is none beside you, neither is there a rock like our Elohim. I Shmuel 22 This is a difficult verse. If it is written there is none holy as Hashem, it would mean there is something else holy, nevertheless, somewhat lesser than Hashem, as it says, as Hashem also neither is there a rock like our Elohim means there is another rock somewhat lesser than Hashem. 38 He answers surely there is none holy as Hashem since there are many holy beings, there are holy. Beings above, namely angels, as written and the sentence by the word of the Holy Ones. Daniel 414 Israel also are holy, as written, you shall be holy. Vayikra 192 They are all holy, yet not as holy as Hashem. The reason is that it is written, for there is none beside or without you. It means that the holiness of the Holy One, blessed be He, exists without their holiness of angels and of Israel, since He is not in need of their holiness, but they are not holy without you, since without you they have no holiness. 39 Neither is there a rock, Hepsur, like our Elohim means, as explained that the Holy One, blessed be He, shaped the form Hepsur within a form that is the form of the fetus in the form of its mother, improved it, blew into it the spirit of life, and brought it out into the world. According to another explanation, neither is there a rock, like our Elohim means that there is a rock which is called only a rock, as written, look to the rock from whence you are hewn. Yeshayah 511. And and you shall smite the rock Shemot 176 they are all called rock yet none is a rock like our Elohim who has power and dominion over everything section 10 a star that struck another star three times here we read the story of what happened at midnight as the rabbis rose to study the Torah they see a star that strikes another star three times and then they hear two sounds one of which is a voice that tells of God entering the garden of Eden to walk about with the righteous the congregation of Israel has united with God and before dawn he holds out to her a thread of Chisa just as the king held out the golden scepter to Esther 40 Rabbi Shia and Rabbi Acha were sitting one night before Rabbi Abba they rose at midnight to study Torah as they were going out they saw a star striking another star three times masking its light at the same time they heard two sounds from two directions one from the north from above and another from below that sound. Below proclaimed, come and gather to your places for just now the guarding over the Mukba Malchut has been released for the Holy One. Blessed be he has entered the garden to walk about and be delighted with the righteous therein. That sound passed away and was silenced. 41 Rabbi Acha and Rabbi Shia returned to the house and said, Surely it is time of goodwill of the awakening of the congregation of Israel to unite with the Holy King Zeir and in the central column. Rabbi Acha said, Surely the congregation of Israel united with the Holy One. Blessed be he only by singing and by her praise for him. 41 B before dawn the king holds out to her a thread of Chesed. Since then the Chakma in her is clothed in Chesed and attains completion. The secret of this is said in the verse. And the king held out to Esther the golden scepter that was in his hand. Esther 52 the king is Zeir and and Esther is Malchut. The golden scepter is the thread of Chesed which with the clothing of Chakma in. Malchut in it is called the golden scepter. Do not say that the king holds out to her alone the golden scepter, but to her and to all those who join her. Let us come together. They sat down. Section 11. And he took one of his sides. Rabbi Shimon says that the first man was created male and female, fastened together at their backs, but that later God severed them so they could be face to face because God blesses newlyweds with seven blessings. Anyone who mates with another's wife destroys the union and is not forgiven until he repents and dies. 42. Rabbi Abba opened with and Hashem Elohim said it is not good that the man should be alone. Bereshit 218. He asks why did the verse speak this way and answers that we learned that for this reason it is not written that it was good about the second day because man will be divided that is a side will be divided from him to build the woman. It is also written it is not good that the man should be alone for
As long as the woman was adjoined to his side, the man was alone. Afterwards, two came out and made it, and seven emerged, namely Cain with his twin sister Abel, with his two twin sisters, which makes five together with Adam and Eve. There are seven forty five. Come and see when he was made ready for Adam, the Holy One. Blessed be he, blessed them. This is the meaning of an Elohim. Blessed them. Verse 128. Just as the cantor gives the bride seven blessings from this, we learned that once a bride and a groom are blessed with seven blessings, they are united as a likeness of above, where Malchut is blessed with seven blessings by Chesed, Bure, Tiferet, Netzach, Hadyazid, and Malchut of Zeir, and 46. Therefore, whoever mates with another man's wife blemishes the union because the congregation of Israel unites with the Holy One. Blessed be he alone, both at the time when he is of mercy and when he is of judgment. Come and see whoever mates with another's wife, it is as if he is false to the Holy One. Blessed be he and the congregation of Israel for this reason, the Holy One, blessed be he does not forgive him through repentance and repentance impends until he dies. This is the meaning of shall not be forgiven you till you die. Isha 2214. When I ask he forgiven when he repents coming into that world where he needs to receive punishment, then he is forgiven. 47 Rabbi Lazar said, Whoever is false to the congregation of Israel by mating with another man's wife, his repentance is not accepted. Until he is punished in Gehenom, this is more true for whoever is false to the congregation of Israel and the Holy One, blessed be he, and all the more so if he troubles the Holy One, blessed be he to make the form of a bastard in another's wife and is false to the king in public openly. Section 12 He who robs his father or his mother, Rabbi Shia says that his father is God, his mother is the congregation of Israel, and the robbery is a man coveting a woman who is. Not his wife, such a man blemishes above and blemishes below and blemishes his own soul. 48 Rabbi Shia opened with the words, He who robs his father or his mother, Mishlei 2824, his father is the Holy One, blessed be he, and his mother is the congregation of Israel, robs his, as in the words, The robbery of the poor is in your houses, Yeshayah 314, what is the robbery? It is man coveting another woman who is not his wife. 49 We learned there that whoever derives any enjoyment from this world, without blessing it is as if he robs the Holy One, blessed be he, and the congregation of Israel as written, He who robs his father or his mother and says it is no transgression, he is companion of a destroyer, whoever enjoys anything of this world, the words whoever enjoys include a woman, whoever joins a woman to enjoy her without a blessing, namely without the seven blessings bestowed on the bride, it is as if he robs the Holy One, blessed be he, and the congregation of Israel, what is the reason? Thereof because they are united by means of the seven blessings, and he who derives enjoyment without them blemishes the supernal seven blessings, and if this is true to a single woman, it is all the more true for one who unites with another man's wife who has the likeness of above by means of the seven blessings through her husband, all the more so fifty he is companion of a destroyer. Mishlei 2824 refers to Jeroboam as was explained, who says it is no transgression of it saying she is single. Why should it be forbidden? Therefore he robs his father or his mother, moreover he is companion of a destroyer. The destroyer is a man who blemishes the form and establishment of above, and all the more so whoever covets his neighbor's wife to cling to her who blemishes even more he is thus blemished forever. He is a destroyer because he blemishes above, blemishes below, and blemishes his soul as written a destroyer, and he who does that destroys his soul. Mishlei 632 section. 13. Let me go for the daybreaks. Rabbi Shimon explains to Rabbi Abba that the angel prevailed over Jacob at night because he was from the side of judgment and night, but when daylight came, his power was lessened and Jacob was able to overpower him. Jacob worried lest the angel should hold his usurpation of Esau's blessings against him, but the angel acknowledged that he had acquired the blessings rightfully and he renamed Jacob Israel. Rabbi Shimon says that if the desire of Malchut is aroused, first drawing God to her with love and desire, she is filled from the right side that is considered male and she bears a boy child. God therefore decrees whether a boy or a girl shall be conceived. Desire should be prevalent first in the world since in every sense people should desire God. 51. Rabbi Abba opened with and he said, Let me go for the daybreaks. Verse 3227. He asks and he said, Let me go. Was he a prisoner in Jacob's hands? And he answers, Happy are the righteous that the Holy One. Blessed be he respects their honor and never leaves them. This is the meaning of he shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. Tehillim 5523 he asks yet it is written and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was put out of joint. Bereshit 3226-52 he answers the angel took from his own we learned the words and he himself lodged at night in the camp of the 22 and he took them and sent them over the wadi of the 24 he asks what did Jacob have in mind to send them across the wadi at night and answers he saw the persecutor walking among his camps Jacob said to himself I shall send them across the wadi perhaps confusion shall be avoided. 53 he asks what did he see and answers he saw a flame of bright fire flying and sauntering among his camps Jacob said to himself it is better to take them from here across the wadi so the river may divide between them and thus there shall be no confusion since demons cannot cross rivers immediately he took them and sent them over the wadi and Jacob was left alone since Jacob prevented him from harming the camps. He touched the hollow of his thigh and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was put out of joint for he took from him what was his own from this we deduce about he who is at home alone at night or during the day in a certain house or more so at night in a certain house what is a certain house itis unique and separate from other houses also whoever walks alone at night might come to harm 54 come and see and Jacob was left alone and then there wrestled a man with him of the 25 we learned that the angel came from the aspect of judgment and his dominion was at the side of night what is the side of night it means he is appointed to bring Israel into exile which is considered night and darkness once light rose his power diminished and Jacob overpowered him because he came from the aspect of night therefore as long as it was night Jacob could not prevail against him but once light rose Jacob's power grew and he Grabbed him and overpowered him, and Jacob knew he was an angel. 55 The angel said to him, Release me, since I cannot prevail against you. Why could not he prevail against him? Because light rose and his power was broken, as written when the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of Elohim shouted for joy. Yo 387 What is shouted? It means all those of the aspect of judgment were shattered, since Y A R I U N shouted, I S derived from shattered. The sons of Elohim are all those coming from the aspect of judgment called Elohim. Jacob then grew strong and seized him. 56 He said to him, and he said, Let me go for the daybreaks. Namely, the time has come together and sing the praise of the Holy One. Bless be he. And he said to him, I will not let you go unless you bless. Let bless me. Bear she 3227 He asked, It should have said, Unless you shall bless me. Why is it written, Unless you bless me in the past tense? And he answers, Jacob said to him, My father gave me the Blessings he wished to confer upon Esau, and I fear you whether you shall acknowledge these blessings or not, for you might denounce me because of them. 57 Forthwith he told him, and he said, Your name shall be called no more Jacob. Ibid 29 He asks, What did he tell him? And answers, He said, You have acquired these blessings neither by means of deceit nor by supplanting, hence your name shall be called no more Jacob. As Esau said, I ask not you rightly named Jacob, for he has supplanted me these two times. Bereshit 2736 For it did not occur through supplanting, but Israel. Bereshit 3229 Israel, which is Zeir and from whom blessings come out, surely acknowledges you that the blessings are yours because you are attached to him. Hence I and the rest of the legions of angels acknowledge them that the blessings are yours. 58 For you have contended with Elohim and with men and have prevailed Ibid with Elohim, namely with all those coming from the aspect of harsh judgment and with men. Refers to Esau and his camps and have prevailed. You prevailed against them, but not the against you. Jacob did not release him until he acknowledged these blessings. This is the meaning of and he blessed him there. But 3059 come and see when the light of mine arises. All the litigants are subdued and are not to be found. And the congregation of Israel is talking with the Holy One. Blessed be he that hour is a time of universal goodwill. And the king holds out to her to Malchut and to all those that are with her. A scepter of the thread of Chesed so as to be completely with the Holy King. We already learned this. 60 come and see when the Holy One. Blessed be he is together with the congregation of Israel. Malchut whenever he is with her
Then below in every sense man should have his desire cleave above to the Holy One blessed be he so desire shall be prevalent first in the world which is Malchut then his wife shall be the first to reach an orgasm and give birth to a male boy happy is a lot of the righteous who know how to devote their desire to the Holy King of them it is written but you that did cleave to Hashem your Elohim are alive every one of you the state of Aram 44 section 14 do not gaze upon me because I am black Rabbi Yehuda compares the title verse to the moon that cannot be gazed upon because it is in darkness when in exile when the sun shines it does so with six lights or Sfirat and when the sun is gone those six lights are gone Yisrael was exiled because of punishment for sins and was sentenced to keep the vineyards of other nations rather than keeping the vineyard of Yisrael itself 62 when a man shall have in the skin of his flesh a swelling a scab or bright spot. Vayikra 132 Rabbi Yehuda opened by saying do not gaze upon me because I am black lit blackish because the sun has scorched me sure hashering 16 we have studied this verse yet when the moon which is Malchut is concealed in exile she says do not gaze upon me it is not that she orders not to look on her but when she sees the yearning of Israel towards her to behold her light she says do not gaze upon me which means you cannot see me do not gaze upon me surely because I am black since I am in darkness 63 he asks why does it say blackish when it should have said black he answers there are two kinds of darkness one is that the sun has scorched me which means the sun which is Zeir and has gone away from me and the other is that my mother's children were angry with me they made me the keeper of the vineyards if it's 64 he asks it says because the sun has scorched me have sheshes after me yet it should have said the sun scorched me have after me he answers there is an allusion to six years since Shesh's Afteni is composed of Sheshang six Afteni for when the sun's EIR and shines it does so with six lights namely the six Firach Yisid Burit Tiferet Netzach Hot and Yisid when it is gone all these six lights are gone my mother's children are all those coming from the aspect of harsh judgment to punish for sins they were angry had Nature with me as in my throat is dried had Nature Tehillim 694 this is what is meant by we are pursued to our necks. Each of 55 for when Yisrael reached exile their hands were tied behind their backs and there was a millstone around their necks so they could not speak this is the meaning of were angry with me 65 they made me the keeper of the vineyards namely to go into exile and keep the other nations for the sake of Yisrael who are among them in exile but my own vineyard I have not kept sure Hashering 16 because I cannot keep them as before at first I kept my own vineyard namely Yisrael and through. If the other vineyards were kept which are the other nations now I keep the other vineyards for the sake of my own vineyard so it shall be kept among them section 15 the earth is Hashem's and the fullness thereof Rabbi Yossi says we are not allowed to look at joyful things since the day the temple was destroyed the rabbis discuss the title verse and they learn from Rabbi Shimon that all the can come from the supernal river that flows out of Eden and Malchut is established by them so that it can nourish the world the main theme is that the world depends on righteousness 66 Rabbi Shia and Rabbi Yossi were walking along the way when they reached a the field they saw a balsam tree on the right side of the road Rabbi Yossi said enveloping smoke is in our eyes we are not permitted to behold a joyful thing such as a balsam tree since the day the temple was destroyed 67 he opened the discussion with the earth is Hashem's and the fullness thereof it world and they that dwell in it Tehillim 241 he asks one saying the earth is Hashem's and the fullness thereof why reiterate with the world and they that dwell in it and answers this is what is meant the earth is Hashem's and the fullness thereof refers to the holy earth called the land of the living the world and they that dwell in it refers to other lands as written and he will judge the world in righteousness Tehillim 99 since the world depends on righteousness it all amounts to the same thing 68 Rabbi Shia said the earth is Hashem's and the fullness thereof what are that specific land Malchut and the fullness thereof he answers these are the souls of the righteous in Malchut in the world and they that dwell in it the world is the lower earth in this world and they that dwell in it are people Rabbi Yossi said if this is so that the earth means Malchut how are we to explain for he had founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods Tehillim 242 he said to him assuredly it is so since the land of the living Malchut he had founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods for they all all the moking come from that supernal river that comes out and flows from Eden which is Bina and Malchut is established by them so as to be crowned by the holy king and nourish the world 69 who shall ascend into the mountain of Hashem he that has clean hands and a pure heart who has not taken my name Litnefesh in vain of it 3 to 4 he asked it is spelled his Nefesh yet is read my Nefesh what are my Nefesh and his Nefesh mentioned in the verse he answers it is all the same thing as written Hashem Elohim has sworn by his Nefesh aim 68 that shall do according to that which is in my heart and in my Nefesh I shmuel 235 my Nefesh is Malchut King David united with that heart and Nefesh namely with Malchut hence it says who has not taken his Nefesh in vain section 16 sufferings of love we learn that God first punishes people for sins in places where others cannot see but if they continue to sin he marks them where it can be seen a marked man who is talking to the rabbis threatens them with violence when his sons will come but the rabbis reply that they must speak the words of Torah otherwise they would be in contempt of God 70 while they were walking they chanced upon a man whose face was full of wounds who rose from underneath a tree they looked at him and saw his face red. Because of the wounds Rabbi Shia said to him who are you he said I am a Jew Rabbi Yossi said he is a sinner for otherwise those evil wounds would not be marked on his face and these are not considered sufferings of love Rabbi Shia said it is surely so because sufferings of love are hidden from people 71 come and see it is written when a man shall have in the skin of his flesh a swelling a scab or bright spot Vayikra 132 there are three kinds here all considered the plague of leprosy. This is the meaning of and it be in the skin of his flesh the plague of leprosy but what is the plague of leprosy it means closed in the Aramaic translation for it is closed in every respect which means the wound is closed and concealed from the beholder of this it is written then he shall be brought to Aaron the priest of it but in relation to those wounds that are exposed it is written the priest shall look on him and pronounce him unclean of it three for surely those seen from the outside. Two people come from the side of impurity and are not sufferings of love 72 Rabbi Yossi asked once do we know that Rabbi Shia said from the words open rebuke is better than hidden love Mishlei 275 the meaning of open rebuke is better I ask that if the rebuke is done with love it is hidden from people so when one rebukes his neighbor with love he must conceal his words from people so his neighbor shall not be put to shame if his words are public they are not with love 73 the holy one. Bless be he does the same when he rebukes man he rebukes him always with love at first he smites him in the internal part of the body if he repents it is well otherwise he smites him under his clothes these are considered sufferings of love if he repents it is well otherwise he smites him openly in his face for everyone to see and know that he is a sinner not beloved by his master 74 that man said to them you plot against me surely to put me to shame you must be of those who frequent it. House of Rabbi Shimon who fear nothing if my sons my descendants shall come they will harm you why do you speak openly you should fear my sons they said to him such as the Torah has written she cries in the chief place of concourse at the entrances of the gates in the city she utters her words saying Mishlei 121 if we fear you in words of Torah we shall be in contempt before the Holy One blessed be he moreover the Torah needs clarity that is open speech the man quoted who is El like you who pardons iniquity and forgives the transgression which is 718 in the meantime his sons arrived his younger son said help from heaven is here for my father section 17 there is a just man who perishes in his righteousness Rabbi Shimon says that King Solomon was the wisest of all men and that during his time the moon was full he saw everything we learned that the righteous perish for the sins of the wicked when the world is full of wicked men and the moon is darkened 75 he opened with all things have I seen in the days of my vanity there is a just man who perishes in his righteousness and there is a wicked man who prolongs his life in his wickedness Kahilat 715 I have studied this verse with Rabbi Dustai Saba who quoted Rabbi Yisus Saba all things have I seen in the days of my vanity he asked how could King Solomon the wisest man speak so that he saw everything when he was treading the darkness of the world that is in the days of his vanity for whoever is dealing with the darkness of the world sees
He loses and does not draw from the supernal joy as he used to. Then the whole left side stirs and the wicked live long and peacefully in the world. This is the meaning of and there is a wicked man who prolongs his life in his wickedness. What is his wickedness? It is that evil side that cleave to him. 79. Moreover, there is a just man who perishes in his righteousness because when there are many wicked people in the world and punishment is suspended, there is a just man who perishes in his righteousness because he is punished for their sins like my father who was punished for the sins of his townspeople who were all impudent but he never admonished them or put them to shame he stopped us from reproaching the wicked he used to say to us of David fret not yourself because of evil doers nor be envious against the workers of iniquity Tehillim 371 his father said surely the holy one blessed be he punished me this way because I could have complained against them but I did not I did not put them to shame neither secretly nor openly section 18 and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life the second son of the marked man gives us this lesson he says that man was born with two inclinations the good inclination corresponding to water and the evil inclination corresponding to fire he says that the breath of life is the holy neshama that comes from Bina that produced the earth the neshama has permission to ascend and speak before God when a man sins or speaks evil, the Sheshana leaves him and an evil spirit comes to dwell on him since holiness has departed from him. He is blemished everywhere, including in his flesh. People are also punished for omitting to speak good words when they should have because this blemish is the speaking spirit. 80 His other son opened the discussion with the verse and Hashem Elohim formed man of the dust of the ground. Bear she 27 and Hashem Elohim formed Hebei Yitzur Vei is spelled. With two yuts to indicate man was born with two inclinations the good inclination and the evil inclination. One the good inclination corresponds to water and one the evil inclination corresponds to fire. Hashem Elohim is a full name the man includes of male and female since the Hebei alludes to the female dust of the ground is the dust of the holy land. Once he was created, it is the place of the temple 81 and breathed into his nostrils the breath had Neshama of life. But this is it. Holy Neshama that is drawn from the supernal life from Bina and man became a living Nefesh. But since man includes a holy Nefesh from the supernal living creature which is Bina that produced the earth, Malchut has written, Let the earth bring forth living creatures, Lit Nefesh, Bershit 124. The Nefesh of that supernal living creature, Bina 82, come and see as long as that holy soul cleaves to man, he is beloved of his master, he is well kept from every direction, he is marked for the good. Above and below, and the holy Sheshana rests on him. 83, when he deviates in his ways, the Sheshana is gone from him, and the holy Neshama does not cleave to him from the side of the harsh serpent. The spirit is aroused that roams and walks a world which rests only on a place supernal holiness has departed from and it dwells on that man, that man is then defiled and is blemished in his flesh and everything and in his countenance. 84, come and see since this living Nefesh is holy and supernal. Namely from Bina when the holy earth Malchut draws it and becomes a part within it it is called Neshama since the light of Bina is called Neshama it is it that ascends and speaks before the holy king and enters through all the gates with no one to detain it it is therefore called the speaking spirit in the Aramaic translation since every other Nefesh not from Bina has no permission to speak before the king except this one from Bina 85 the Torah therefore proclaims saying keep your tongue from evil Tehillim 3414 and he who guards his mouth and his tongue Mishle 2123 since if his lips and tongue speak evil things these things rise up and when they do everybody declares be gone from the proximity of the evil speech of so and so give way to the path of the harsh serpent the holy Neshama is then removed from him it is gone and cannot speak as it says I was done with silence I held my peace and had no comfort Tehillim 393 that Neshama rises in contempt in Trouble of every kind it is not given place as before of this it is written he who guards his mouth and his tongue keeps his soul have nefesh from trouble surely his nefesh who used to speak is not silent because of the evil words it uttered then the serpent comes since everything returned to its place its original state as before he attained a neshama when the evil speech rises through certain paths and rests before the harsh serpent many spirits are stirred in the world and a defiled spirit descends from that side of the serpent and finds the man who roused it through evil speech and the speaking spirits removed from him the defiled spirit defiles him and he then becomes a leper 87 just as punishment is afflicted on man because of evil speech so is he punished because he could have pronounced good words but did not for he blemished that speaking spirit which is composed so as to speak above and speak below and everything is in holiness it is even more true if the nation walks the crooked path and he can talk to them and reprove them yet he is silent and does not speak as I said it is said of him I was done with silence I held my peace and had no comfort and my pain was stirred up stirred up by plagues of impurity this is why it was said that King David was plagued with leprosy and the holy one blessed be he turned away from him as written that he asked turn you to me and be gracious to me Tehillim 2516 which means he turned away from him what is turn you to me it resembles the words and Aaron looked or turned Bimidbar 1210 just as the latter verse alludes to leprosy so here it alludes to leprosy Rabbi Shia and Rabbi Yossi alighted and kissed him they went together all that way Rabbi Shia said of them but the path of just men is like the gleam of sunlight that shines ever more brightly until the height of noonday Mishle 418 section 19 the plague of leprosy the priest knows all the types of plague and whether the person is undergoing sufferings of love or is being rejected by God one should consult his heart three times to lead it in the path of truth it is evil that causes the plagues in the world in Aramaic leprosy is translated as closing because it closes off the supernal lights 88 when the plague of leprosy is in a man then he shall be brought to the priest Vayikra 139 Rabbi Yossi said the friends commented on all the colors of this plague the priest knew whether to pronounce clean or unclean according to them he knew if these are sufferings of love or those upon one whose master rejects him and is far from him for according to man's ways the plague is caused in the world 89 it is written incline not my heart to any evil thing to practice wicked deeds with men who work iniquity Tehillim 1414 from this we derive that a man is led in the way he wishes to walk Rabbi Yitzhak this verse is difficult does the holy one bless be he turn men to walk the path of sin and commit evil deeds that he says incline not my heart to any evil thing in that case there is no justice in this world or in the world to come and the Torah is imperfect in which is written if you hearken to Barum 2813 and if you will not hearken to 15 which indicates that everything depends on man 90 and he answers David admonished his heart saying incline not my heart to any evil thing so as to lead it in the path of truth as written and consider it in your heart Devarim 439 what is consider it means one should return to the heart once twice and thrice to lead it in the path of truth and admonish it he also said to it incline not my heart to any evil thing since an evil thing caused plagues in the world so judgment hovers about the world this is the meaning of the plague of leprosy 91 the friends spoke about the plague of leprosy but leprosy is explained according to its Aramaic translation said Rabbi Yehuda what is it translated into it is closing because it Closes supernal lights and does not open up when it closes and does not open it is considered a plague. Rabbi Yossi said that the patriarchs Jesus, Bura and Tiferet are not nourished that is they do not receive light and all the more so the children net and Yezid this is the meaning of when the plague of leprosy is in a man real man namely Zeir and the secret of Yudh Hav faithfully spelled with Aleph which has the same numerical value as that of Adam and man from here it descends to whomever it descends to namely to lower man who caused it and closes his light so there is universal plague from the closing of the lights 92 Rabbi Yitzhak said surely this is the inner meaning of the words he has aboard his sanctuary Egypt 27 which means the lights of the temple which is Malchut were shut the reason is that the people in the world brought it about by their sins as written because he has defiled the sanctuary of Hashem Bimidbar 1920 actually defiled Rabbi Lazar said he had defiled it because someone was gone namely Zeir and the harsh serpent rests on it and injects filth and brings defilement to whomever it does all this is due to the sins of the world section 20 she eats and wipes her mouth we learn that because of man's evil tongue the serpent appears both above and below the lights are closed when someone commits a sin and then says they have done nothing wrong 93 we learn that when the primordial serpent begins to be revealed the supports nets and hot and the edifices of Mokin are gone and removed from Mal
Serpent. The reason it says serpents in plural is that it resembles the words the heads of the sea monsters. Tehillim 7413. Two of them, one attached above and another attached below. In this world, it is also written Seraphim stood above him. Yeshayah 62 above him, assuredly, namely as in the verse to present themselves before lit above Hashem. Eo 16, which means against Hashem for the sons of Elohim are judgments and Hashem is mercy here too above him. Is like against him and everything is. Closed as all the lights are shut and there is none to open since then the serpent comes and injects filth in the root of the soul of the sinner in Malchud which is considered adultery hence it is written likewise the way of an adulterous woman she eats and wipes her mouth and says I have done nothing wrong Mishlei 3020 what is adulterous actual adulterous surely of which it is said she eats and wipes her mouth and says I have done nothing wrong 95 Rabbi she is said in the name of Rabbi. It's hot by universal will namely the supernal will the serpent abides below only because he abides above and he does not abide above except when he abides below due to the sins of the world as we learned that everything is interdependent section 21 wisdom excels folly Rabbi she wonders why Solomon says he saw that wisdom excels folly since surely it must be obvious to everyone we learned that no one was as wise as Solomon since he is named after the seven grades. Of wisdom corresponding to seven spirot, and he actually spoke of seven vanities or breaths. The world is supported only by breath, since Rabbi Shimon taught that breath produces a sound by way of the wind and water in it, and the sound exists only by way of breath. In the same way that a man cannot exist without breath, the world cannot exist without the words of wisdom that Solomon said. And the breath by which the world endures comes from the breaths above. Wisdom is actually revealed by way of its opposite folly, just as light would not be known without darkness, nor white without black, nor sweet without bitter, nor health without illness. God has made the one as well as the other. Ninety-six, and the man whose hair is fallen off his head. Vayikra one thousand three hundred and forty. Rabbi Shimon opened with, "Then I saw that wisdom excels folly." Kehila two hundred and thirteen. I have studied the words of King Solomon in different places and observed his great wisdom, since he concealed the meaning of his words inside the holy sanctuary. This verse. Need studying why did he say I saw do not the rest of the people in the world know or see this even those who never knew wisdom or studied it know that wisdom excels folly as far as light excels darkness yet he praises himself and says that I saw 97 we learned that none is wise as Solomon who is named after the seven grades of wisdom in the likeness of above namely to correspond to Chesed Vira Typhara Net Sachad Yezid and Malchut of Malchut the secret of lower Chakma the grade of Solomon for there are six days above Chesed Vira Typhara Net Sachad and Yezid of Zeir and a seventh above them which is Bina there are seven days below in Malchut Chesed Vira Typhara Net Sachad and Yezid and a seventh above them which is Bina there are six steps to the throne of Solomon and he is upon the throne as written and Solomon sat on the throne of Hashem as King Idabraham 2923 there are seven crowns of the days namely the seven Sfirah Chesed Vira Typhara Netzach Hadiyazit and Malchut above and seven corresponding names to Solomon to indicate holy wisdom hence he had seven names which are Solomon Yedid Yagur Ben Yakalem Ulaitayel and Kahilat 98 he spoke of seven vanities namely vanity of vanity says Kahilat vanity of vanities all is vanity Kahilat 12 there are three times vanity and twice vanities which are four together there are seven he saw what no one else saw and when he gathered wisdom and climbed the grade of wisdom he was called Kahilat he spoke of seven vanities also breaths which correspond to the seven spirot above and a sound is made of every breath and the world is supported only by breath 99 we learned in the name of Rabbi Shimon that breath produces a sound by the wind and water in it and that sound exists only through breath and we learned that by seven breaths the supernal and the lower beings exist Rabbi it's hot come and see that the world is supported by breath for were no breath to Come from man's mouth it would not have been able to exist even a moment 100 similar to that that man cannot exist without the breath of his mouth Solomon said his words upon which the world is supported he said that through breath the world endures and the breath by which the world endures comes from the breaths above this is the meaning of breath of breaths Kahila 12 namely a breath coming from the breaths above all his words were in that strain of the supernal breaths it is written. But by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of Hashem does man live. Devarim 83 what is the word that proceeds out of the mouth of Hashem it is the supernal breaths 101 we learned then I saw that wisdom excels folly wisdom excels through actual folly for were there no folly in the world wisdom and its matters would not be made known we learned that one who studied wisdom must study some folly and know it for this way wisdom excels just as light excels through darkness for were. There no darkness light would not be made known and the world would benefit by it. 102 we learned that wisdom excels namely wisdom in general including both supernal wisdom and worldly wisdom for Rabbi Shimon said to Rabbi Abba come and see the inner meaning of the matter supernal wisdom does not illuminate nor is it shown upon except for folly that was roused from a different place were it not for this folly there would be no expansion of light and greatness and wisdom would not excel for. Folly wisdom shown more and is shown more upon this is the meaning of that wisdom excels wisdom in general both above and below more than folly in general both above and below for this is the way below were there no folly in the world there would be no wisdom in the world 103 when the friends studied secrets of wisdom from Rabham and Asaba he used to teach them verses of folly so that wisdom would excel for their sakes this is the meaning of a little folly outweighs wisdom and honor. Kahila 101 because folly is good for wisdom and the preciousness of wisdom hence it is written yet guiding my heart with wisdom and to lay hold on folly Kahila 23 104 Rabbi Yossi said a little folly outweighs heavy wisdom and honor namely the preciousness heavy of wisdom and its beauty and what is the preciousness of supernal honor which is malchute it is a little folly because a little folly discloses and reveals the preciousness of wisdom and honor of above more than anyway. In the world 105 as far as light excels darkness Kahila 213 for light excels only through darkness what establishes white black for were it not for black white would not be comprehended since black exists white is elevated and glorified Rabbi Yitzhak said this is like sweet and bitter no one recognizes the sweet taste before he tastes bitter what causes it to be sweet bitter for opposites reveal each other like white and black light and darkness the sick and the healthy for were there. No sick people in the world the adjective healthy would be meaningless this is the meaning of Elohim has made the one as well as the other Kahilat 714 and it is good that you should take hold of this but do not withdraw your hand from that either Ibit 18 section 22 man person we learn that man has different names in different stages but the greatest of these is Adam in scripture it is often the word Adam that is used rather than ish person or anash human for example because it refers to man on the highest level the name Adam includes the four faces of the chariot which is perfection everything that was created in the world exists for his sake once Adam was created everything was completed above and below the hidden book says that when Adam was created he descended in a holy supernal form and that two spirits came down with him the right spirit is the holy neshama and the left spirit is the living nefesh it was due to his later sin that these two Spirits were separated. We hear of how the demons and their offspring, the plagues, were created from the left hand spirit. The rabbis have a question about the nature of Ish. Is it a perfect upright man or a man of judgment? Since the word is used in both senses in Scripture 106, we learn that man has names in different stages, for he is called Adam, man, male man, and Ash, humanish person. The greatest is Adam, as written. So Elohim created man, have Adam in his own image. Bereshit 127, and for in the image of Elohim made he man, have Adam. Bereshit 96, instead of using the Anash or Ish, Rabbi Yehuda said, in that case, it is written, if any man have Adam of you, bring an offering to Hashem, Vayikra 12, who needs to bring an offering only whoever sins, who is of a lesser level. Nevertheless, it is written, Adam 107, Rabbi Yitzhak said, come and see the mainstay of the world of the upper and lower beings is a sacrifice which pleases the Holy One. Blessed be he who is worthy of offering before. In this pleasure it is Adam the most precious which means it is higher than the other three he said to him in that case it is written when a man have Adam shall have in the skin of his flesh and it be in the skin of his flesh the plague of leprosy Vayikra 132 yet the name Adam is used he said to him for this reason
is written Hashem is a man of Bishop Warshemot 153 instead of Adam he said to him the council of Hashem is with them that fear him Tehillim 2514 he said to him in that case I dwell among them which means that he too is one of those that fear Hashem yet I have not had the merit to understand this paragraph 110 he said to him go to Rabbi Abba since I learned from him but not in order to reveal he went to Rabbi Abba and found him discoursing on the matter of when it is considered overall perfection when the Holy One blessed be he sits on the throne Malchut before he sits on the throne before he unites with Malchut there is no perfection as written and upon the likeness of the throne was the likeness as the appearance of a man Adam above upon it Yashiskal 126 the use of the word Adam when he sits on the throne means he is in perfection since the name Adam includes the four faces of the chariot as written as for the likeness of their faces they had the face of a man of the ten which is perfection in every way Rabbi Yehuda said to him blessed be the merciful that I have found you discoursing on it he said to him in that case it is written Hashem is a man Habishab or instead of Adam he said this is a good question 111 come and see there on the sea there was no comprehensive perfection because he executed justice on Egypt hence it is written Ish but here when he sits upon the throne there was comprehensive perfection and the embodiment of everything for this reason it is called Adam Rabbi Yehuda recited over him the Torah of your mouth is better to me than thousands in gold and silver Tehillim 11972 112 he said further it is written man Hab Adam and beast Tehillim 367 and not Ish and beast even though this refers to a lesser degree since it likens him to a beast he said to him no it is written Ish as it is written neither against man Habish or beast Shema 117 but the words man Hab Adam and beast are similar to from the cedar tree that is in Lebanon to the hyssop that comes out of the wall I may lash him 513 for it is the style of the scripture to grasp the highest and lowliest here also the highest is Adam and the lowest is the beast 113 he said to him yet it is written and there was not a man had Adam to till the ground bear sheet 25 what is the significance of mentioning the name Adam he said to him come and see whatever is in the world was only for the sake of Adam and everything exists for his sake therefore they did not appear in the world and everything was held back until the arrival of him that is called Adam this is the meaning of and no plant of the field was yet in the earth but yet was translated into not until since the supernal form called Adam did not appear this is the meaning of and there was not a man had Adam to till the ground this means that everything was held until that form appeared for that reason that form Adam was created solely with the shape appropriate for it this is the meaning of an Hashem Elohim formed man Bereshit 27 with a complete name as we explained that the name Adam comprises comprehensive perfection and encompassing wholeness 114 we learned that Adam was created on the sixth day which is the chariot to the supernal man Zeir and when the throne which is Malchut was completed as written the throne had six steps I may lash him 1019 which are Chesed Bira Tifer at Netzach Hot and Yezid of Malchut that is called throne therefore man was created on the sixth when the sixth Tifer at Chesed Bira Tifer at Netzach Hot and Yezid reached completion for he supernal man is worthy of sitting on the throne we learned that once Adam was created everything was completed all that is above namely Zeir and Malchut and below and all was included in Adam 115 we learned Rabbi Yossi said it is written as for the likeness of their faces they had the face of a man which means that the face of man comprehends everything and all the three. Faces lion ox and eagle are part of this form of the face of man Rabbi Yehuda said yet it is written and they forehead the face of a lion on the right side and they forehead the face of an ox on the left side Yashiskal 110 so there are also the forms of a lion and an ox as well he said to him they all had the face of a man and in this form of man all the shades and forms were seen as we learned his face was the face of an eagle not that he is an eagle but in the form of man the form of an eagle could be seen though essentially he had the form of a man since the face of man includes all aspects and shapes 116 Rabbi Yitzhak said come and see whatever is under the power of man Adam is called Ish since he was established after the manner of Adam on a different grade than the latter had before for we learned according to a high mystery of the concealed book that when Adam was created he descended in a holy supernal form and two spirits came down with him on two sides on it Right and left, which are the whole of man, the right spirit is called holy Neshama, is written and breathed into his nostrils the breath had Neshama of life. Bereshit 27, the spirit on the left is called living Nefesh, it gradually descended from above down to the Garden of Eden, and the Neshama on the right did not settle with the other on the left, which means that he sinned by the tree of knowledge of good and evil and separated the right from the left. 117, when Shabbat entered and Adam had already sinned, creatures were formed from the left hand spirit whose bodies were not completed, namely demons. They joined the body of Adam, the male and the female, even begot offspring in the world. They are called the plagues of men. We learned that there are supernal spirits coming from those who were made from the spirit on the left of the first man. They are not attached below in this world, but are suspended in the air. They hear whatever they hear above and from them other spirits below. In this world learn they appear to people in their dreams and inform them 118 we learn that 325 sparks come out of the heart spark they are imprinted on and attached to the aspect of Bura and are called Bura they converge and become one when these enter the body namely Zeir and been called body it is called Ish this we learn that there is a perfect and upright man Habish and a righteous man Habish but the Ishir is a man of war as written namely Hashem is a man Habish of war. Shema 153 since he consists entirely of judgment and this all means the same thing Rabbi Yehuda said why does it all mean the same seeing that a perfect and upright Ish is of mercy while Ish of war is judgment he was unable to answer him they came and asked Rabbi Shimon he said to them it is even more difficult as we learned it is written she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man Habish Bereshi 223 we learn that Ish is Jesus but you said here that he is judgment. Section 23 Holy and Pure Rabbi Shimon explains that it is both mercy and judgment and he tells how the presence and absence of hair on the head denote purity and impurity the levites are pure only when their hair is removed because they come from the side of judgment and are ish and not Adam we learn about the purification by water and are told that the supernal ish and is completed by washing in supernal cheese the rabbis also speak about a white reddish sore on a person and the meaning of the white and the red lastly we hear that prayer is actually the congregation of Israel 119 we learn that everything eventually means the same and it is all the same namely ish is both cheese and judgment since the judgment of the lower join and unite with his hair he is considered harsh judgment once the hair of his head is removed he is settled and the judgments of the lower beings do not appear this is why he is considered pure since only that which comes out of it Side of impurity is pure when it comes out of the side of impurity it is considered pure as written who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean of 144 yet here it says and the man whose hair is fallen off his head he is bald yet is he clean Vayikra 1340 120 come and see there is a hard spark upon the head of that man and for that reason his skull is red as a rose and the hair is red within the redness of the skull the lower spirot from below are suspended from him that rouse judgments in the world once the hair is removed from him and he is bald everything is firmly established by means of supernal cheese since the illumination of chakma in him is established through supernal cheese and he is named pure after him 121 rabbi Yehuda said if he is named after him he should be called holy not pure he said to him it is not so since he is considered holy only when the hairs on his head are hanging since holiness comes from the hair as written he shall be holy and shall let the locks of the hair of his head grow be midbar 65 this ish is considered pure from the aspect of those that come down from him the impure external forces that were removed with the removal of his hair for that reason once the hairs were removed from him he is purified 122 come and see whoever is from the aspect of judgment and judgments cleave to him is purified only when his hair is removed once his hair is removed he is purified as for adam it is not so because complete perfection and mercy abide in him so it is not true since all that is holy and the holy ones are united in him but as for that who is called ish and not adam he is then of judgment and judgments are attached to him namely to his hair therefore he is not firmly established until his hair is removed 123 come and see the love come from the side of judgment they are purified only when their hair is removed as written and thus shall you do to them to cleanse them sprinkle water of Purifying on them and let them shave all their flesh, Gimit bar 87, and in order for
Attachment This is the meaning of on the same day shall Hashem shave with them beyond the river with the king of Assyria the head and the hair of the legs and it shall also sweep away the beard Yeshaya 720 that means that in order to overthrow the king of Assyria he will shave all the hair of the higher beings to which they are attached 125 we learned and thus shall you do to them to cleanse them Bimit bar 87 what is thus it means it bears the semblance of above sprinkle water of purifying on them namely the residue of crystal dew here there is water of purifying which is the residue of dew in the future to come it is written then will I sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean Yashiskel 3625 and let them wash their clothes and so make themselves clean Bimit bar 87 bears the semblance of the higher Zeir and for that it is completed by washing in supernal Chisit and purifies in every respect here too let them wash their clothes with Chisit that is Called water 126 we learn the reason why it is written that they shave rather than cut he answers this is so that the hairs would be removed from their roots since shaving removes the hair from the root and the lower judgments will be removed from their hold on his hair when the deeds of the lower beings are upright the holy one blessed be he will remove these hairs and shave them off so they will not grow and increase as written whose hair is fallen off his head Vayikra 1340 127 Rabbi Yitzhak said the greatest of all the Levites is Korah whom the Holy One blessed be he made below as a likeness of Ishabov and called him Korah when did he call him Korah when he made bald the Ishabov is written a man whose hair is fallen off his head he is bald 128 when Korah saw his head hairless and saw Aaron bedeck himself with royal adornments he felt himself slighted and was jealous of Aaron the Holy One blessed be he said to him I made you resemble the higher yet you do not wish to ascend among the higher go down and be among the lower as written and they go down alive into Sheol Bimit bar 1630 what is Sheol it is Gehenom where the wicked cry out but there is no one to have pity on them they will be resurrected and rise from Gehenom when the Holy One blessed be he will rouse his people and revive them as written Hashem kills and gives life he brings down to Sheol and brings up Ishmael 26 129 and he whose hair is fallen off from the part of his head toward his face Vayikra 1341 we learned that there is face and there is face what is the face in the verse and he whose hair is fallen it is called a wrathful face since all that derives from that impudent face is harsh without mercy when the hair is removed from the part of the head towards the face all the external forces hanging from them are removed and subdued 130 we learned that all those external forces coming from the hair of the head are superior to others and not as Impudent all those coming from the side of the hair towards the impudent face are all powerful and impudent for that reason his face is burning like fire because of the heart spark in IT of this it is written the anger lit face of Hashem has divided the Misha 416 and the face of Hashem is against those who do evil Tehillim 3417 section 24 a white register 131 Rabbi Yitzhak said what is a white register of Vayikra 1342 and answers that it is an actual sore if the white is exposed and the redness does not go away this is derived from the words white reddish as both are seen Rabbi Yossi said white reddish means the white is seen only with the red as white and red together Rabbi Yitzhak said that the meaning is as was said above even though the white appears if the red does not disappear it is a sore as written though your sins be like scarlet they shall be as white as snow Yeshua 118 for when it turns completely white there is Mercy and no judgment 132 we learned that Rabbi Abba taught it is written now it is a sore in the masculine and now it is a sore in the feminine and he answers when the female malchute is defiled because of the iniquities of the lower beings it is written it is a sore in the feminine when the male which is Zeir and on the level of Ish is not purified because of the iniquities of the lower beings it is written it is a sore in the masculine 133 the priest ascertains whether the judgments come from the one Zeir and or the other malchute and learns about the offerings that need to be brought is written a male without blemish Vayikra 423 or he shall bring it a female without blemish 32 for the priest finds out whence the judgments came and whence the iniquities whether they are attached to this the male or that the female hence it is written in relation to the sacrifices the sacrifices of Elohim are a broken spirit Tehillim 5119 excluding the other sacrifices of which it is not written a broken spirit since they are peace in the world and the joy of the higher and lower beings 134 but if the priest look on it Vayikra 1321 Rabbi Yossi taught it is written O you that hear prayer to you Tehillim 653 you that hear prayer refers to the Holy One blessed be he namely Zeir and Rabbi Shizkiah said you that hear prayer it should have said prayers wherefore is it your prayer and he answers prayer is the congregation of Israel namely Malchut which is called prayer is written while I have nothing but or I am prayer Tehillim 1094 David said that for the sake of the congregation of Israel and as for his worlds I am prayer it has the same meaning since Malchut is called both I am prayer regarding this it is said you that hear prayer Hetifila which is Malchut this is a hand Tefilin or Tefila of which it is written upon your hand Shema 1316 spelled with and an indication of Malchut. Section 25 He shall be brought to the priest. The question arises to whom a person should be brought when he has a pain or a plague or an affliction. The priest is said to be God who can purify the afflicted, and the priest below knows how to rekindle the light when leprosy has closed off the supernal light and stopped the supernal goodness from descending into the world. 135 To you shall all flesh come. Tehillim 653 Namely, when the body is in pain, afflictions, and plagues as written, or if there be any flesh in the skin. Vayikra 1324 The plague in the skin of the flesh of it 3 and the raw flesh of it 15. Hence it is not written to you shall all spirit come, but rather to you shall all flesh come. What is to you it is as we learned that he shall be brought to the priest. Ibid 9 refers to the Holy One. Blessed be he. This is the meaning of but if the priest look on it. Ibid 21 Come and see at one place it is written Aaron the priest while at another just it priest not mentioning Aaron in that case it is the Holy One blessed be he 136 Rabbi Yitzhak said yet it is written when the plague of leprosy is in a man then he shall be brought to the priest of nine is that the Holy One blessed be he, he said to him yes it is the Holy One blessed be he, since all matters of purity and holiness come from the Holy One blessed be he, he said to him in that case why yes it said he shall be brought it should have said raised for ascension not bringing pertains to the Holy One blessed be he, he said to him this resembles the words and the poles shall be put into the rings Shema 277 which means putting them into each other here to be brought means he is brought to the Holy One blessed be he, that is called the priest in order to purify him like bringing the matter before him 137 Rabbi Yitzhak said we learned that in a plague of leprosy plague means harsh judgment that rests over the world leprosy means closing as we learned which is a closing of the supernal light shutting the supernal goodness from descending into the world it is in a man man in general alludes both to man above and man below he shall be brought to the priest namely the priest below who is knowledgeable in opening that closing and kindling the lamps which are the spirot so that through him there will be blessings above and below that plague shall be removed and gone and the light of mercy will dwell on everything for that reason he shall be brought to the priest section 26 and be holy we learn here of the proper time for mating for those who study the torah and that is midnight on shabbat when god walks with the righteous in the garden of eden people are holy only by association with their god if they draw away from him they lose their holiness and draw upon themselves souls from the side of the evil inclination the priest can recognize people's sins by the blemishes that show they come from the other side 138 Rabbi Abba said I see that the people in the world do not observe or know the glory of their master it is written of Israel and have separated you from the peoples that you should be mine Vayikra 20 26 and sanctify yourselves therefore and be holy for I am Hashem your Elohim of it 7 but if they draw far from the Holy One blessed be he where is their holiness if their wish is distanced from him the verse declares be not like the horse or the mule which have no understanding Tehillim 329 for people are different from a horse and a mule only by their holiness so as to be whole and distinguished more than everything 139 therefore people made at specific times so as to direct their will to cleave to the Holy One blessed be he it has been remarked that at midnight the Holy One blessed be he enters the garden of Eden to delight himself with the righteous and the congregation of Israel which is Malchut praises the Holy One blessed be he it is a favorable time to cleave to them to the Holy One blessed be he and his
Knowledge refers to the Holy One, blessed be he, the silly not good refers to the soul they draw by their deed, it is not good since that soul comes to them from the other side, which is not good since they do not direct their heart towards the Holy One, blessed be he, 142, whoever gets hot with the evil inclination without directing his desire and heart toward the Holy One, blessed be he, then a soul that is not good is drawn upon him from the side of the evil inclination, this is the meaning. Of also that the soul be without knowledge is not good, and he that hastens with his feet sins of it, whoever hastens with the feet and precipitates matters that is does not wait until the time is proper, but I ask without a holy wish sins assuredly he sins in every way 143 for that reason evil plagues dwell in people and testify on their faces to their impudence to show that the Holy One, blessed be he, rejects them and does not pay attention to them until they are worthy and better there. He says before for that reason the priest recognizes that the plagues come from the side of impurity and that they come from the other side. Section 27 Plagues of Houses We learned that when Israel came into the land of Canaan they demolished the houses that had plagued in them and then found treasures hidden there. Rabbi Shimon talks about how the words uttered over a work in progress bring the spirit of holiness or the spirit of defilement over it by breaking down it. Contaminated houses the land was sanctified as before and the spirit of impurity was removed and Israel dwelt in holiness with the Shechinah among them 144. Similarly it is written when you come into the land of Canaan and I put the plague of leprosy in the house of the land of your possession. Vayikra 1434 He asks what is the good reward in finding plagues in the houses of those who were worthy of entering the land and he answers it has been explained that it is that after they will. Demolish the contaminated houses they will find treasures the Canaanites have hidden in their houses and Israel will benefit from them 145 yet come and see happy are Israel to be cleaving to the Holy One blessed be he and the Holy One blessed be he loves them as written I have loved you says Hashem Malachi 12 in his love he brought them into the Holy Land to cause his Shechina to rest among them and to dwell among them so that Israel will be holier than all the inhabitants of it. World 146 come and see it is written and all the women whose hearts stirred them Shema 3526 that is when they were doing their work they used to say this is for the temple this is for the tabernacle that is for the curtain all the craftsmen did the same so that holiness shall dwell on their efforts and that workmanship shall be sanctified when they brought it to its place it turned into and was in holiness 147 in the same way whoever creates something for idol worship or for another. On holy side once he mentions it in regard to that work the spirit of defilement dwells on it as the work progresses it does so in impurity the Canaanites were idol worshippers and used to build edifices for sculptures of their faces and for their abominations on the side of impurity for the purpose of idol worship when they started building they used to say something once it was uttered the spirit of impurity rose over the building as the work progressed it did so by the spirit of impurity. 148 once they entered the land of Israel the Holy One blessed be he wanted to purify and sanctify the land for them and make room for the Shechinah so that the Shechinah will not dwell on an impure place hence by that plague of leprosy they would demolish the buildings of wood and stone made in impurity 149 come and see if this action of breaking down the contaminated houses was done for the sake of finding treasures alone they would have to return the stones back into place as they were. And also to return the dust to its place yet scripture says they take away the stones Vayikra 1440 and he shall take other mortar of it 42 thus the spirit of impurity will be removed and taken out and the land shall be sanctified as before and Israel will dwell in holiness in holy habitation so the Shechinah will dwell among them section 28 woe to him that builds his house by unrighteousness we are told that whoever builds a building must start by saying that he is doing it for the worship of God and then the peace of heaven will rest on it anyone who builds a house dedicated to the other side will be punished by that house before he dies and others who live in it may come to harm God mark the houses in Canaan by the plague so that Israel would know which houses were cursed 150 therefore whoever builds a building before starting should utter by mouth that he does so for the worship of the Holy One blessed be he since it is written woe to him. That builds his house by unrighteousness. Your Mayah 2213 and help from heaven rests on it on the house and the Holy One blessed be he readies his sanctity upon it and calls it peace. This is the meaning of and you shall know that your tent is at peace and you shall visit your habitation and miss or sin nothing. Eo 524 what is meant by and you shall visit your habitation it has been explained yet visit means to visit by mouth when building namely to say with his mouth that he builds it. To serve the Holy One blessed be he then it is written and sin nothing otherwise the other side is ready to dwell on his house 151 this is more so for whoever builds with his wish directed in a different way in dedicating his house to the other side to be defiled by it surely the spirit of defilement rests on that man and he is punished by that house before he dies whoever lives in it may come to harm since the spirit of defilement rests in that abode and harms whoever is in it 152. You may ask how is it made known whether the builder drew on it the spirit of defilement if whoever built it came to harm in that house or any of his household whether in body or finance and also two neighbors after him who dwelt there one should run into the mountain rather than live in it dwell in an earthen cave rather than live in it 153 for that reason the Holy One blessed be he took pity on Israel who did not know at all about those houses they found in the land whether the spirit of impurity was there or not the Holy One blessed be he said even if you do not know I do know and I shall mark them by a plague if a plague rests in the house which is the other side behold another powerful plague that I sent there to take it out and destroy it then and he shall break down the house the stones of it and its timber Vayikra 1445 he asks once the plague is gone because of the other plague that brought it out why break down the house seeing that the other side has already left. He answers as long as the house stands it is his of the other side who can return section 29 and he shall break down the house Rabbi Yussi once entered the house and then heard a voice saying he would be harmed he left in fear Rabbi Shia wonders why the idol worshippers who live in that house are not harmed and Rabbi Yussi says it is because they are all from the other side and it will not harm them we also learn that the wicked can dwell safely in a house that was built on righteousness 154 this applies to the holy land and all the more so to other lands where the spirit of impurity is more prevalent in those houses and people might come to harm from it Rabbi Lazar said moreover the spirit of impurity that is their calls to its other friends and clipot to be there even knocking on vessels which was done to exorcise spirits and demons from a place does not remove the demons from that house for that reason scripture says woe to him that built his House by unrighteousness, Yermeah 2213, the dwellers in this house surely recite this verse daily 155. One day Rabbi Yussi entered a certain house, he reached the threshold, composed himself, and entered into the house. He heard a voice saying, Gather round here is one of our dissenters, let us take him and harm him before he leaves. They said to it, We cannot harm him unless he lived here. Rabbi Yussi went out in fear, he said, Surely whoever transgresses the words of the friends risks his life. 156 Rabbi Shia said to him, But idol worshippers and other people live in that house, yet they are well unharmed. He said to him, They come from their side and are therefore not harmed by them, but whoever fears sin might come to harm, even they if they continue to live in it, do not leave in peace. He said to him, Yet it is written, Their houses are safe without fear. Yo 219, he said to him, This means the house came from another who built it in righteousness, and the wicked took it and dwelt in IT. Verses as follows, their houses are safe without fear, namely when their houses are safe without fear because they were built on righteousness, then the rod of Aloha is not upon them. Section 30, the plague and the spirit of defilement are opposites. We are told that when the plague enters a house, the spirit of defilement appears and they fight each other. The priest is then told about the plague and he comes and demolishes the house. Rabbi Yehuda says that Israel received wealth twice once when they left Egypt and again when they entered the land by breaking down the contaminated houses. Lastly, Rabbi Yussi talks about the bright white spot that is sometimes found in the flesh of a person and Rabbi Yitzhak says there are 300 arguments that may be derived from the intensely bright spot 157 and he that owns the house shall come and tell. Vayikra 1435, he asks it says until it should have said said or speak why tell and he answers this always. Alludes to a matter of wisdom and it has been explained it seems to me there is as it were a plague in the house of it he says as it were a plague should have been just a plague he says it seems to me there is should have been there is as
indicates wisdom 159 the priest then comes and they demolish the house and break it down the wood stones and the rest once they broke it and were purified in every way they are blessed and it is written and have built goodly houses and dwelt in them to 812 which means they will build them righteously these are called goodly houses because the earlier ones were not good not pertaining to the holy and the pure 160 rabbi yehuda said in that case how can we explain the verse Houses full of all good things which you did not fill. Devarim 611 If the spirit of defilement rests in them, how can they be filled with goodness? Rabbi Lazar said they are filled with good things, money, silver, and gold, and everything is written for the good of all the land of Egypt. Beersheet 4520 Rabbi Yehuda also said, Yet all the houses in Egypt were filled with witchcraft and items of idolatry. How can the verse say for the good of all the land of Egypt? It was said for the good because of the wealth of the land here too, due to the wealth and money. It speaks of houses full of all good things. 161 Israel received two times wealth once when they left Egypt and one when they entered the land by breaking down the contaminated houses. Rabbi Shimon said the purpose of all these plagues in the houses was to sanctify the land and remove the spirit of defilement from the land and from Israel. In addition, when one broke down the house, he would find a treasure in it sufficient to rebuild and fill his house so he will not be sorry for the house that was broken down and they will dwell in a holy habitation 162 if a man also or a woman have in the skin of their flesh bright white spots vay 1338 rabbi you see said we learned that the excessive acidity and the intensely bright spot of which 300 agreed upon laws were recited follows its appearance and its appearance is judged in these many ways rabbi itzhak said one may derive 300 arguments from the intensely bright spot i have learned them all from my father excepting a one when there is one black hair one is still impure because it is one witness two black hairs are two witnesses and so one is pure more than that even a hundred hairs are like two and the two hairs are as a hundred thus i have learned this afterwards from the words one witness shall not rise up against a man at the mouth of two witnesses Debarim 1915 section 31 the white color and the red color rabbi Shizkia says that the sore is considered a sore when the white that indicates Jesus does not remain as it is but turns red that indicates judgment it is written that Esau came out red at birth so judgments dwell in him if the sore began red and turned white it is becoming purified if it began white and turned red it begins to be defiled the priest can recognize all these things Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Yitzhak talk about why Elisha obtained a double portion of Elijah's spirit 163 Rabbi Shizkia was sitting before Rabbi Shimon he said it is written a white reddish sore of Aikra 1342 it is considered a sore when the white that indicates Jesus does not remain as it is but turns red that indicates judgment Rabbi Shimon opened with the words though your sins be like scarlet they shall be as white as snow Yeshua 118 happy are Yisrael whom the Holy One blessed be he wishes to purify completely so they will not be in a state of judgment before him and so the administrators of Judgments will have no power over them for everything follows its own kind. Red follows judgments, the secret of red and white follows Jesus, the secret of white, the right which is white to the right which is Jesus, and the left which is red to the left which is judgment. 164 It is written of Esau, and the first came out red. Bear she 2525, hence its own kind dwells in him, namely judgments, the secret of red. You may say that red applies to Esau, yet it is written of David, now he was ruddy. Shmuel 1612 He answers the one Esau was made of the dross of gold, which is harsh judgments, the other David was attached to the brightness of gold, which is the left of butter that is called gold, and his mercy it is written of Esau, red all over like a hairy garment, which means he came out of the dross remaining from the melting of gold, it is written of David with fine eyes and good looking, which alludes to the illumination of Chakma called eyes and also called sight that is drawn from. The left column of Bina included within the right in IT 165 come and see what is the reason a white reddish sore is impure if the white color is known to be Jesus and the red color to be judgment then if it was first red and now white appears in it then purity emerges and it begins to be purified but if it was white at first and the red appears in it now it begins to be defiled it is also written and the priest shall pronounce him unclean Vayikra 1311 the priest recognized all these appearances sometimes the appearance of purity is seen so he will quarantine him to see whether another appearance will emerge otherwise he pronounces him clean as written the priest shall pronounce him clean of it 6 166 Rabbi Yitzhak and Rabbi Yehuda were walking along the way Rabbi Yehuda said it is written so let the disease of Naaman cleave to you and to your seed forever 2 Melashim 527 he asks if he sinned why shall his children be stricken he said to him Elisha saw deeper then. The other prophets he saw that no worthy son will come from Gehazi and he therefore cursed him 167 he also told him I did a superior service by Elijah and attained two portions namely he attained a double portion of the spirit of Elijah since I served him in truth but you are wicked you injured me by swearing falsely and coveting any Amon's gift so you have transgressed the whole Torah but since you served me your service will not be in vain and your death shall be in this world but not in the world to come for that reason so let the disease of any Amon cleave to you and to your seed section 32 she seeks wool and flax we learned that the power of the plague that comes from the highest place has power over everything both wool and linen 168 Rabbi Yossi said why mention a woolen garment or linen garment I should have spoken plainly of a garment Rabbi Yitzhak said the verse teaches us that the plague dwells everywhere and has power over everything. Since wool comes from Bina and linen from Malchut and the plague has power over both there is a likeness as written she seeks wool and flax Mishlei 3113 which teaches us that Malchut makes use of both for that reason it teaches us here that the power of the plague that comes from the highest place has power over everything namely the two kinds wool and linen for that reason the verse says this is the Torah of the plague of leprosy in a garment of wool and or linen Vayikra 1359 Section 33 Woe to him that builds his house by unrighteousness Part 2 Rabbi Yitzhak follows a man with a load tied on his shoulders into a cave inside the cave he sees the man entering a hole in the ground and disappearing so the rabbi is afraid and leaves the cave Rabbi Yehuda tells him that God has saved him from a cave of lepers and sorcerers that do witchcraft with black serpents the rabbis encounter a man who is taking his son to the cave for healing the son was harmed by Spirit in their house we learned that the first to receive a house owns it forever whether it be the spirit of holiness or the spirit of defilement if the defiled house is destroyed it should be rebuilt slightly farther away with new materials and it should be dedicated to the holy name we now hear that the man who took his son to the cave for healing left his son for a moment during which time the boy was hit on the head by a smoky column of fire and killed Rabbi Lazar says that a man should speak the holy name over everything he does so that the other side will not dwell on it 169 Rabbi Yitzhak was going to his father's vineyard he saw a man turning from the road with a load tied to his shoulder he asked him what is the rope that adorns your shoulders for that is why did you tie the load to your shoulders he did not answer at all he followed him and saw him entering a cave so he entered after him he saw a column of smoke rising from beneath the ground and the man entering a Hole and disappearing from his sight, Rabbi Yitzhak was afraid and went out to the mouth of the cave 170 while he was sitting. Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Shizkiah passed by when he saw them. He approached them and told them what happened. Rabbi Yehuda said, Blessed is the merciful who saved you. This is a cave of lepers from the city of Surunya. All the inhabitants of that city are sorcerers that go to the desert to seek black serpents, which are at least 10 years old in order to do witchcraft. They did not take care of themselves, so became lepers. The different kinds of witchcraft are done in that cave 171. They walked on while they were walking. They met a man coming with his sick child on a donkey. They asked him, Who are you? He said to them, I am a Jew, and this is my son bound upon the donkey. They asked him why he was bound, and he said to them, I dwell in a certain village that belongs to the citizens of Rome. This my son used to study Torah daily and return home to learn these matters. I Dwelt in this house for three years and saw nothing. Now one day my son went home to repeat the things he learned when a spirit passed before him and harmed him. His mouth, eyes, and hands became contorted, and he cannot speak. Now I come to the leper's cave of Surunya. They may teach me some healing. 172 Rabbi Yehuda said, Do you know of anyone else who came to harm in that
Defilement for the reason that if the holy name is the first to receive that place not of the spirits and demons of the world can be seen there not to mention approaching it but if the spirit of defilement is the first it takes that place and the holy name does not dwell in it since it is not its place 175 when the plague of leprosy descended upon that house it would purify that place and bring out the spirit of defilement from its place later that house was broken down together with its wood stones and everything and rebuilt through the holy site and in righteousness by mentioning the holy name and causing holiness to rest on it nevertheless one should build it using a different earth and build it two hand breadths away 176 now that nothing appears or descends to fight the spirit of holiness to uproot it from its place since there are no plagues now what is to be done in a house where the spirit of defilement was the first to dwell he answers if one can take it out on his own from the house it is well otherwise he should rebuild it using different stones wood etc and pull it away from its first location and dedicate its building to the holy name 177 with all that the spirit of defilement does not leave its first place and holiness does not dwell on a defiled place rabbi it's hawk said why should one bother so in demolishing a house and rebuilding it in a different location these days when there are no plagues it is written that which is crooked cannot be made straight kahilat 115 forever since the temple was destroyed and there are no plagues there is no remedy for that reason one should be careful to be guarded from the spirit of defilement that is that it will no longer dwell in that house 178 they said let us go with that man to the leper's cave and see rabbi it's hawk said we must not have he gone to receive remedy from a great sin-fearing man like Naaman who went to Elisha we would follow but now that he goes to those who are distant from the world the lepers and the sorcerers distant from the Torah abominable in every respect we must not appear before them blessed is the merciful who saved us from them and a man is forbidden to receive remedy from them Rabbi Yehuda said yet we learned that everything is good for remedy excepting the woods of the Asherah he said to him this is idolatry and so is forbidden moreover it is written there must not be found among you anyone that makes his son or his daughter to pass through the fire Devarim 1810 they went on their way 179 that man went to that cave with his son and left him in there as his father went out to fasten his donkey a smoky column of fire came out and struck his son on his head killing him when his father entered he found him dead he took him and his donkey and went his way another day after that he found Rabbi Yitzhak Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Shizkiah walking he went before them and told them what happened Rabbi Yitzhak said did I not tell you many Times it is forbidden to go there blessed is the merciful all of whose deeds are true and whose ways are just happy are the righteous who walk the path of truth in this world and in the world to come of them it is written but the path of just men is like the gleam of sunlight Mishlei 418 180 Rabbi Lazar said in whatever man does everything needs to be dedicated to his holy name what does this mean it means he should utter with his mouth the holy name over anything he does so that everything will be for his service and the other side will not dwell on it for the other side is always ready against men and might dwell on the deed one performs for that reason the warp and woof would be defiled and the spirit of defilement dwelt on it and if this is so the spirit of defilement dwells much more when one commands his words to the other side by swearing etc for he must not do so for that reason it is written and keep you from every evil thing to 2310 Section 34 Say I pray you you are my sister we learned that Abraham told his wife to say she was his sister because he was counting on her merit whoever merits a prudent wife merits everything Abraham saw an angel who said he would protect her so he had no fear for his wife but some fear for himself Sarai ordered the angel to strike Pharaoh ten times with ten plagues Rabbi Abba talks about the difference between the redemption from Egypt that occurred on one day from one king and one kingdom and the final redemption that will be from all the kings of the world everyone shall acknowledge God's reign and glorify him and the patriarchs will be resurrected with joy and they will see the redemption of their children as before 181 Rabbi Lazar went to see his father accompanied by Rabbi Abba Rabbi Abba said let us speak words of Torah as we walk Rabbi Lazar started with say I pray you you are my sister Beersheet 1213 this is a difficult verse could it be that Abraham who Feared sin and was a friend of the Holy One, blessed be he would speak so about his wife so as to derive benefit from it. He answers, even though Abraham was sin fearing, he did not count on his own merit and did not wish the Holy One, blessed be he to deduct from his merit, but counted on his wife's merit that through her he will gain money from other nations, for man attains money through his wife as written house and riches are the inheritance of fathers, but a prudent wife is from Hashem. Mishlei 1914 Whoever merits a prudent wife merits everything, it is also written the heart of her husband safely trusts in her and he shall have no lack of gain. Mishlei 3111 182 Abraham through her merit went to consume the gain of the other nations as in and he shall have no lack of gain. He counted on her merit that they will be unable to punish him or make advances on her for that reason he gave them nothing by saying she is my sister. Beersheet 1219 Moreover he saw an angel walking. Before her who said to Abraham do not worry for her the Holy One blessed be he sent me to take money from the other nations and keep her from anything Abraham then had no fear for his wife but for himself because he saw the angel not with him but with his wife he said to himself so she is kept but I am not for that reason he said say I pray you you are my sister 183 that it may be well with me but 13 he asked it should have said they may do well since they said therefore it shall come to pass when the Egyptians shall see you that they shall say this is his wife but 12 hence it should have said they may do well he answers it may be or do well refers to him that walks before you namely the angel the Holy One blessed be he may do well with me in this world and my soul shall lie but 13 in that world because of you but if you turn not from the path of truth for if I gain money because of you in this world and you turn from the way I shall deserve death in that world so beware that my soul shall live in that world for your sake 184 because of the angel that was walking before her to keep her it is written and Hashem plagued Pharaoh because of Sarai but 17 because of Sarai surely namely because of her words she would say to the angel strike and he struck Abraham therefore had no fear for her since she was protected the reason he feared for himself was because he saw nothing guarding him 185 come and see 10 times did Sarai command it angel to strike Pharaoh and he was smitten with 10 plagues for Sarai made a sign for her descendants after her in Egypt namely that the Egyptians will be smitten by 10 plagues before they will be redeemed from their power 186 Rabbi Abba opened with as in the days of your coming out of the land of Egypt I will show him marvelous things Mishnah 715 the Holy One blessed be he will display redemption for his children as in the days when the Holy One blessed be he sent to take Israel out of Egypt and showed all those plagues in Egypt and smote them because of Israel come and see the difference between this redemption at the end of days and the redemption from Egypt the redemption from Egypt occurred on one day from one king and one kingdom here it will be from all the kings of the world and the Holy One blessed be he will be glorified over the whole world and everyone will acknowledge the reign of the Holy One blessed be he and everyone will be smitten with celestial plagues twice for each one because they all were reluctant to release Israel 187 the reign of the Holy One blessed be he will be then revealed as written and Hashem shall be king over all the earth Zechariah 149 the nations will then be prompted to bring Israel to the Holy One blessed be he this is the meaning of and they shall bring all your brethren Yeshua 6620 then the patriarchs will resurrect joyfully to behold the redemption of their children as before this is the meaning of his in the days of your coming out of the land of Egypt I will show him marvelous things amen so will be desired